Hey, welcome to our third episode of this, I guess, pretty new show now, um, the Golden Path Spring One, which is basically our little Golden Path that's going over to Spring One over in August. So uh, today we have Kat Gaines from Pager Duty joining us. Hi, Tiffany. So, Hi, everyone. Thank you. I also like how your shirt matches like the color theme going on here. Yeah, it very much does. It's a pager duty shirt, so it's classic pager duty green. That makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> especially with our like Zoom and uh, like all the stream yard and all these calls, you it's like yeah. you can't actually see anything below here, so you never know. <laughs> but yeah, so um, today's episode is about customers because those people are very, very important or most all of us wouldn't even have jobs. So the title is Happy Agents Equals Happy Customers, Empower Your Customer Service Team to Lead the Way. I will post in the chat the link to um, the stream, like the description and everything for the stream today. If you wanna look at it, click on a few things and whatnot. Um, but yeah, thanks for coming everyone. Uh, if you have any questions, please, put them into the chat. Uh, we'll be answering them at the end of this, pretty much at the end of the stream. So yeah, if you want to like tell us a little bit about like, I mean, I assume by the name or if people don't already know of PagerDuty, they probably know, but if, maybe if you could tell us just a tiny bit about like PagerDuty or what you do there. Yeah, definitely. So PagerDuty is an incident management um, operations platform. Um, and so this doesn't necessarily tie into what people think instantly when they think of PagerDuty, but we do have a customer service product too. And so that's part of why I'm talking about this today. Also, my background is in customer service. Um, uh, that's where most of my career was until I moved into DevRel. And so I have a lot of investment in uh, basically making sure that customer service teams are operating in the way that they need to. And then also so marrying that with the incident management process when something goes wrong, when it doesn't go well, how do you actually communicate that to your customers? How do you deal with making sure that they have up-to-date information? And your customer service agents are actually a huge part of that pipeline, obviously, because they're the ones who are interfacing with folks when things go wrong. So that's a little bit of what we're talking about today. Awesome. So I will pull, kick it off to you then and let you begin then. Fantastic. Okay, so again, folks, hi, my name is Kat Gaines. As we just covered, I'm a developer advocate at PagerDuty, and this is Happy Agents, Happy Customers, um, empowering, empowering your frontline teams to lead. A bit of a mouthful, but <laughs> just so we know what we're in for. Uh, so prior to my current role, as I mentioned a moment ago, I ran global tech support at PagerDuty. And one of my former team members, who's still a good friend of mine, had switched careers a few years back from customer support to sales and complains a lot that her peers had leaned on her to explain the mysteries of the customer support professional whenever trying they're trying to approach folks in that area. So really, it's not a mystery what customer support is. Anyone who's ever contacted a customer support team knows that we live in a world of answering questions and helping customers solve problems. But the question of what the nitty gritty is and what folks really get into and what folks need in order to be thriving teams comes up a lot because most of us understand the function of a customer support team, but not everyone takes the time to think about the people on that team, what motivates them, and then what allows them and by association your business to succeed in their mission of what we'll hear a lot, creating delightful customer experiences. So, do we remember this movie? Um, it's Inside Out by Pixar for anyone who isn't familiar. It came out in uh, about 2015, I think. And back then our world maybe wasn't perfect, but some things felt a little more okay than the last couple of years. We were all, you know, just kind of walking around, breathing on each other freely. Um, not in a weird way, but you know. Uh, this is one of my favorite Pixar movies. It's not just because the protagonist has blue hair, but back then, what I call yield and days really pre-pandemic, um, a lot of customer perception of businesses could easily be built on face-to-face -face interactions. In software, that still hasn't always been in the case, even back then, but generally pre-2020 was a world where even your when your customers were upset, for a lot of businesses, they could just walk into a storefront or an office and someone could use their human connection, their face, their facial expressions, their presence there to soothe their woes. In this movie, I really loved the depiction of how emotion shapes us. Um, I read this New York Times article back then about the movie that states, emotions guide our perceptions of the world, our memories of the past, and even our moral judgments of right and wrong. Um, I would add to that that it also 
guides the decisions we make day to day, the businesses we interact with, where our money goes. So when that storefront interaction isn't possible, a kind smile can only be really felt so much over the phone, much less in a ticket. Uh, support teams are amazing, but they can come off as just another email to a customer, especially one who's already a little upset. And the ability to shift the emotional tone to a calm one is pretty hard when face-to-face -face is really screen-to-screen -screen or email-to-email. And we've pushed a lot toward heavy automation too. This is great. I'm a huge fan of automating away mundane tasks and things that shouldn't consume calories of a support agent's energy. But for a customer, if we're not careful, badly configured chatbots, unnavigable phone menus, robotic voices can all just add fuel to the fire when emotions are already high. So now more than ever, it's really crucial that support teams aren't just there to churn out ticket responses or produce customer reports. Again, they're your customer's entire perception of the business when they're experiencing problems, issues, or questions. Agents are investigating, reproducing issues, the liaise with other internal teams, provide their own feedback, create docs. The list is kind of endless of the types of responsibilities they manage to create and manage this customer perception and the customer interactions they have in the interest of doing so are really high stakes on an emotional scale. So there's opportunity here to corral big emotions via those people who have a lot of access to them. Emotions have a ripple effect too. A customer service agent who feels like they have the tools and knowledge at their fingertips, who isn't confused in their day-to-day, -day, hunting down information, will be a lot happier in their jobs. And if they're happier in their jobs, they'll have better conversations with your customers. So it's really a way to set yourself apart from competitors. Our next big question is how we create that environment. Before we dive into that, I'm just gonna throw some numbers at you, some stats to highlight the risk of not doing this. So we lose $62 billion each year as an industry due to poor customer service. A customer is four times more likely to buy from a competitor if the problem is service rather than price or product related. 70% of buying experiences are based on how a customer feels they're being treated. And 62% of us will say that we'll share our bad experiences with others if we have a bad experience. When your customers have those issues with your services, even if it's only limited to their environment, Again, their experience with your customer service team can make or break their relationship with the brand. Someone who has a bad experience will take it absolutely everywhere. Twitter, Yelp, I've even seen people on my local next door group talking about businesses that aren't doing well or the inverse businesses that they really want to promote. But wherever it is, it's really easy for dissatisfied customers to just air their grievances publicly. So how do we create those happy agents? We need to create visibility. In order for your CS team to help customers, they need copious amounts of information, data on the people they're talking to, the systems they're working with, and the products they're supporting, visibility into other teams in the org who have this data, who to ask when problems arise and what they're working on. We also want to remove some friction, make those difficult moments easy. So being part of a customer support team really means more difficult moments, hunting down information than you'd like. So if you can make the job easy for that team, it will pay off, whether it's automating tasks that don't need a human, including customer support teams and tooling revamps, sharing tools with engineering, and designing processes for critical moments like major incidents or outages. Finally, investing in people. You cannot create a happy employee out of thin air. CS leaders need a lot of help doing this. And people at the end of the day need investment in their career growth, in the ability to collaborate with their peers, and they need a voice in the organization to know that their feedback is heard. So we're gonna dive a little bit into each of those three pillars. The first is creating visibility. Really, we're talking about revolutionizing your customer experience. Your teams might not always realize how deep, complex, and cross-functional that effort can get. So what we're looking at here is just a look at a popular streaming services dependency map upon which their product runs. There are thousands of microservices represented here. They're all connected, all dependent upon one another. The data that each one generates is kind of meaningless in isolation, but as a group, it becomes that thing that we call software. Behind that software, you have people tasked with keeping this complexity running and with anticipating the unexpected, really being ready for anything by keeping track of all of this. <laughs> and looking at this, you can see a clear visibility, visibility challenge, excuse me, ahead of the teams that manage this. So sharing that visibility with the other side of the business, CS teams, they also have their own complexity to keep track of. Teams have to work together to reach that goal of shared visibility from customer service on the front lines to your engineering teams. 
We're going to talk more through the ways in which this can be done, and I'm going to challenge you while we do that to think about how your teams are working together to resolve issues. For example, if a customer reaches out to customer support, how does that agent find the right person to fix the problem? So when I talk to pager duty customers, something I'm most interested in is understanding what challenges are standing in their way of efficient process and healthy communication. When it comes to CS and engineering teams working together, some of the most common issues highlighted in those conversations are really exacerbated because their departments are working in silos. Customer support is keeping track of metrics. Their CSAT, customer satisfaction, SLAs, service level agreements, response times, and hunting down information constantly so they can produce the right answers to keep those metrics healthy. But it's likely there's a wall here, standing in the way of achieving that goal. Tools and systems where they have either no or limited connection with engineering, whether it's consulting a spreadsheet directory, filing issues in JIRA, those types of tools can be a barrier and communication gets impacted. They can't get timely information on the status of issues, and engineering, likewise, can't get a good picture of how customers are experiencing the issue. CS is a natural extension of what engineering teams do when it comes to the impact on the customer experience. To build better products and care for our customers, these two departments need something pretty crucial. They need connection more than ever. Shared metrics and shared understanding of each other's goals is one step in this direction, and shared tooling with full visibility can push that a step further. So we believe that CS is a natural extension of what we've been doing at PagerDuty and what engineering teams are working on. To meet the goals of either team, whether it's building better products or caring for customers, the two departments really need that connection and shared metrics to be able to get there, to understand what's happening behind that wall, and to take it out of being kind of a black box where they're not seeing what's going on, giving them those tools to help customers understand as well. You can also use your customer support team to create visibility for engineering, for other parts of your organization. It's really important to remember that crucial information about problems can come from your customers too. They can be the signal. We work really hard as an industry to prevent customers noticing issues. And that's a great goal, but it just isn't always realistic. Sometimes it's going to happen. They're going to see what's up and they're going to be impacted. So using that data that your customers give your CS team about what's wrong also has the effect of empowering agents to become part of the incident response process rather than just reacting to it. Let's talk about that reaction um, and making it a little bit more proactive by removing friction. So customer support isn't easy. There's enough friction already. It's a hard job. If you've never worked in CS, I'm going to give you another piece of homework, is, which is to go shadow your customer support team and understand a little bit where that friction happens. And actually, no matter what, I'd like you to take that away as an assignment here. It's a great way to get to know who your customers really are by seeing them in their high emotion moments and seeing how your customer support team navigates that. All of the questions are coming their way, very few of the answers immediately at their fingertips. There are a lot of manual tasks to complete and not enough people to share the load. The increased demand and shifts of how we work over the last couple of years have only exacerbated those problems. So when I talk to CS teams about this, I also recommend leaning harder into tooling that lets you automate. That's especially timely right now as teams might be dealing with reductions in force and having to do more with fewer people. So automating mundane tasks like chatbots, et cetera, it sounds scary. Sometimes people bulk at it a little bit when I automate my team out of a job is a fear that comes up. But if you have CS leaders who really focus the support on things that customers could reasonably self-serve anyway, like password resets, et cetera, and let their teams focus on the deep dive problems, really those teams will just be better able to focus on the interesting problems rather than the mundane. If automation can be applied when a ticket needs to be escalated to engineering, for example, the agent can then focus on what they can help with in the ticket, what they can actionably do to assist that customer, rather than just hunting down manual steps to make that escalation happen. You are probably using tooling to streamline your operations. Maybe pager duty, maybe something else. But if you are, share this with your customer support teams. Bring them into the loop. Your metrics out in the open with theirs in the same tools will help you stay aligned on common goals and reduce this kind of friction. Being able to share processes and to see information together in real time when something isn't going to plan will change the game completely. 
The feedback loop that's required for a mature software development lifecycle really needs the customer service team to operate effectively, and you can only do that if you have shared visibility across your organization. There's no other way, I promise. We'll talk a little bit more about what this looks like in practice in terms of the customer service team's role in incidents. So it's about being proactive, designing for critical moments, specifically those major incidents, service disruptions, outages, whatever you might be calling them internally. When you share the tooling that's used to address those issues from the engineering side with your CS team, you can build out process to keep your agents informed. So they'll play the role of communicating with customers from the beginning to the end of an incident. That's a no brainer. A customer reaches out to customer service specifically to say, hey, what's up? This looks broken. Um, they'll be the person not just to shepherd that initial request, but to be the person giving them updates throughout and letting them know when everything's resolved, bringing them back to a sense of ease with the product at the end of the day. They'll also be around to aggregate those customer reported issues into meaningful data. So when there's an incident, your engineering team needs to know the blast radius immediately. Blast radius sounds intense as a term. I guess I don't really love using it, but what I really mean is how much of the service is impacted, how many features, the depth to which they're affected, and discovering whether they're just slow or if they're completely offline, totally broken, super, super just done. Customer impact is part of that data, but you might not be able to find that on your own. That's where the customer service team comes in by associating inbound customer complaints to the technical incident, which helps drive priorities around maybe what should be tackled first? What do we need to fix? What's having the biggest impact on customers in terms of the symptoms they see? As the customer service team receives reports of issues during an incident, that data really just becomes part of the impact of the incident itself and should be incorporated into the resolution process. They can also help prioritize SLAs. Your customer service team is in a really unique position to confirm the impact of that incident with regard to your end users. And they'll also have the insight to know when your services are reaching an SLA for certain customers and to alert the responding team. This is an important piece of information to manage and engineering teams might not have the visibility into those contractual agreements depending on what those look like with your customers. So this aids in prioritization of issues. If restoring some services first, we'll maintain an SLA for a customer or category of customers. You can also have your customer service team advise on whether or not an incident should be escalated or have its severity increased based on that customer intelligence they're receiving. More customer impact could mean a higher severity level for the incident, more responders included in triage, more stakeholders informed. The decision, decisions that you make down the line get impacted completely. They can also handle liaisons and stakeholder communications. Um, you know, just, I can't see you, but raise your hand to yourself if you've ever been in an incident and you've been tapped on the shoulder by somebody asking for updates where you really needed to avoid the distraction, but someone is asking about what they can tell customers. Maybe it's a sales rep, maybe it's an executive who's concerned about the state of things, and you've been distracted from the actual mitigation process. The customer service team can just take the lead when it comes to codifying your communications practices for incidents. They can create messaging for customers, templatized responses and communication processes. They can own all of these things if it fits your org, and they can help reduce that distraction factor for your engineers. If you have templates about clear information about the services impacted and where to go for more information, that will help them do that faster and more efficiently as well. And then they can also help handle post-incident follow-up. Once everything's cleaned up, a lot of your customers will either keep hitting refresh, or if you're lucky, they'll be watching your status page for updates. But the folks who skip this step, who went straight to customer support, it can be kind of a pain because you do want them to watch proactive channels if you have them, but you can ease the cognitive load of responding to these customers via a newfound connection with the incident process. If your organization holds either post-mortems or incident reviews, that team should be part of the conversation. When they have that extra data to present to users about the impact of the incident, the resolution, and the long-term plans for prevention, the tone really changes. Your customer feels consistency and those agents feel real ownership of the conversation rather than being off the rails, having a chaotic path to answers. At the end of the day, involving your CS team through the entire process, start to finish, allows them to kind of gain control of their own destiny a bit, provide valuable input, input back into the resolution process, and calling back to everything I've been saying, just leverage their experience to create a better customer experience, keeping everyone's feet firmly on the ground. 
For that third pillar, investing in people. That's my last piece of advice here. Your customer support team is not just here to report on metrics to the business or slog through the queue. Investing means giving them time and space to expand their skills, grow in your, their careers. Good support leaders know that they're not going to keep their teams forever, but that they can build a strong team that offers phenomenal support and also can create a hiring funnel into the business. Giving them this space can sound hard. Um, CS leaders often need more resources. They might have limited budgets. They might be trying to implement things like premium offerings for their customers and have no idea how they're going to staff for expanded hours or faster responses. And it's a good point. Those customers will have questions at any hour and they'll expect a high touch level of support. Hiring 24-7 staff won't help them redesign their team's status as a cost center, but developing a staffing model to use their time efficiently just might. Sharing tooling with engineering can actually be one way to get there. For example, if engineering is on call for responding to issues, customer support can use the same tooling to provide a creative solution, rotating a specialized team for those odd hours or high priority issues, having their own team on call. Existing staff can share that responsibility, or they can open a new career path for those who want to be on a team with specialized knowledge. Anyway, you spin it, having a team that can be notified as needed, rather than fully staffed at all times, just staring at a queue, waiting for something to come in, will allow those leaders to scale their customer experience much more efficiently as their business grows. And empowering customer service teams to reach out to other teams and advocate for customers in the way that I described in going over the incident response process also creates new communications channels and opportunities. A customer service team can serve as a gateway into your organization for technical personnel who are still building skills, for example, and having a close relationship with your engineers supports that career growth. Customer service agents who transition to other departments bring with them their customer focus and dedication to the customer experience, which is a really valuable addition to teams in your organization who may not have had the opportunity to do this in their careers. So really hitting these areas of building those career paths out, nurturing those relationships kind of benefits your business in more ways than one. So this is really what it looks like to bring your customers, customer service team, and development teams together. The modern software development lifecycle doesn't end when your code is checked into a repo and all the tests turn green. That constant feedback loop from users back into development planning links user requirements directly to the product management phase of the cycle. Organizations across multiple industries have seen the benefits of adopting shared goals and purposes across different teams in this way. So include your customer service team in larger org-wide initiatives like DevOps transformations and automation projects. Doing this only increases the effectiveness of customer-focused teams, and improving their day-to-day -day work improves the experience they can provide for your customers. We all have a horror story about contacting our customer service department and being met with someone who is clearly miserable. So knowing that those teams need the same management attention that any team does, especially since their roles contribute so much to the customer experience, can prevent those experiences happening for your business. In a nutshell, your happy agents translate to happy customers. Thank you. I've got a link up here and a QR code to some information on our website, just kind of diving deeper into some of these concepts. My Twitter handle is um, on my name here on the screen, but also on the slide at Strawberry Field with uh, number one in place of the letter I. And I think we have a couple minutes left. Yeah, thank you so much. This is really cool. I haven't seen a talk like this before or on this topic specifically. It's really fun to talk about. <laughs> Yeah, so there aren't any specific questions because, I mean, you basically explained everything as you were going through. That, yeah, that and Jermaine said, oh, gee, things get real on next door. <laughs> but yeah, so for anyone who's watching this afterward, if you found this from here, um, the link for seeing more about this is on tatsu.tv golden path slash three. Um, Chiller Bang says, thanks for the presentation. <laughs> and Doreen says hi. <laughs> hi, Doreen. Thanks for coming. Things do get real on Nextdoor sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much for doing this. This was really awesome. Yeah, thank you for and, having me. Yeah, and then it'll be up on, uh, like, for it'll be up over on Twitch. It'll be on YouTube. There's more than one YouTube, but all the links will be on the uh, website afterwards. Fantastic. So, yeah. Yeah, folks, my DMs are always open if questions come up in the future. So happy to answer them where they do. And so, yeah, in a few months, um, we will have 
uh, VMware Explorer with Spring One this time around. So that'll be in Las Vegas from August 21st through 24th. So please come join us.